Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a macro in Excel. As you can see I already have Excel open and I'm working in a spreadsheet that has both a customer data entry area and a customer data collection area. I have my developer tab open and I have already practiced my steps. Now I'm ready to make my macro. I have two choices. I could use Visual Basic and write my macro out using VBA code. Or I could use the record macro option, which is a much simpler for most of us just starting out using macros. When using this method, it will start off with asking me for a macro name. My macro I'm trying to make is one that will transfer my data. So data transfer. You'll notice I've not put any blank spaces or special characters in here. Next I have to decide if I want a shortcut key. If I do I would enter it here. Let's say perhaps control D. Keeping in mind that any shortcut key I use that already exists in Excel will override the standing Excel shortcut key of that name. Next, I put in a description. I've already decided I'm simply storing it in this workbook. So I might put in something that tells when I created this, and I might also add what the purpose of the macro is. Once I've done that, everything I do from this point forward is being recorded. Remember, macros don't record how long it took you to do something. They only record what you're doing. You can see now Stop Recording has changed the previous Run Macro button, and I'm ready to start work. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going over to my Customer Data Worksheet, and I'm going to turn off Protection, because this is a worksheet I normally keep protected. Then back to my customer data entry and I select the data I would like to copy. Back over to the customer data area. I'm currently in cell A1. I want to now go to the last row, so I'm going to use the N key and the down arrow. Now it's very important to go back to the Developer tab. In order to not overwrite data, I'm going to use the Use Relative References. So I'm so clicking it, that turns it on. Now I simply use the down arrow to go down to the next blank row, and I turn that off. Now I'm ready to paste in my values, so I'm going to select Paste Values. My data is now here. I want to go back to A1, back to Review and Protect my worksheet once again. Now go back to my Customer Data Entry and make B2 my active cell, so I'm ready for new data entry. Now I'm ready to stop recording. You can see that I've created a macro because when I come back over to the Developer tab and click Macro, I see my data transfer. So let's try it out. By editing some data. Now I would like to run my macro. I could go back and run it from here, or but I did put Control D. And now I can go see, now my macro has recorded and moved my data over, taken me back to the data entry, and I'm ready to restart my customer recording of information. That's very simply how you run a new macro and record it and create it. To sum up, to create a new macro, I can use either the Visual Basic method and open that editor and type in VBA code, or I can use the record macro method, and since this is such a simple method and the macro I'm creating is very basic, I chose to use that. 
So I ran the macro. I walked through each of my steps. This, this was after much practice before running it, of course. And then I simply stopped the macro and then I could run it. And as you can see here, I can run it from the macro dialog box or I could use the shortcut which I created for this one.